Hi, my name is Shizu Saldamando, and I'm the artist who created the artwork here at the Palms Metro Station. Uh, we're sitting here under a panel of my uncle. Um, a lot of my work in general is about different subcultures of Los Angeles, whether it be dance club life, um, activist life, uh, general, general everyday sort of happenings. Um, for this series, I wanted to depict people that had a relationship to the new Expo line. Um, and I chose to depict people that happened to be close to me as well. So for that reason, I picked my uncle, Aki, as one of the main portraits for this series. He is a teacher, and he grew up on Colby Avenue after the Japanese American internment camps. He settled there along with the rest of my mother's family. I really want to be inclusive and give homage to the area and be true to who the people are that exist in that area. I would think it would be a disservice not to depict people that from, are from around there. I noticed a pattern with a lot of the people I was depicting were artists, but they were also educators as well. They're also teachers in different ways. Some of them, like my uncle, taught high school. There is a portrait of my friend Maricela. She I first met at the Virginia Park and Rec Center. So she had a girls group, and I always admired not only her artistic vision, but also her teaching style and her vision for education. Who else? Elias Serna, who's on the other side of Maricela's panel. He was actually my TA in my Chicano Studies class, one of my first Chicano Studies class I took at UCLA. I think it's, there's sort of this void in mainstream media, even in social media, where people of color are depicted as relatable, I guess, and that aren't sort of huge celebrities or exceptional athletes or amazing activists. Like, can people of color exist and be people without having to reach exceptionality or something and, and still be valid and still be worth equal rights or having, you know, a voice and not being criminalized. I think that's what the crux of a lot of my work is, to depict people that are relatable but that may not necessarily seem so exceptional. I guess if you just look at them half glance, but then by me depicting them, I'm sort of glorifying their, their everydayness. This person maybe has a couple parking tickets, but they're still valid people. They're still people and human, and I think that's where a lot of my choices in terms of what to depict come from, is normal, everyday people. Hi. Hello, Shizu. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> so, as a treat for explaining a little more background into the work, I invited my friend Sochi to come. Um, I wanted to introduce you to her because a lot of my work revolves around me depicting friends and family and people I admire and feel close to. And with no exception, I have Sochi here, who's a brilliant mind and scholar. And she is a depiction. She's actually in this panel. And I wanted to show everybody the panel with you as a way to talk about the content of the work as well. And so it's great that you could be here. As a community member, as a member of the Oaxacan community here, I think it's so wonderful to see our presence um, depicted in your work. It's, it's, so, it's so wonderful. It's a, definitely a, a feeling of belonging. And it, I think it's a really wonderful reminder of how this city, which is so intensely diverse and, and, and you know, just intensely interesting, is that way because of the contributions of so many different peoples like so many well, immigrants too. And this is who we are. We're here. We're part of this community and that we contribute to the face of the city. It's a wonderful feeling as a member of the community. You know, it really is. And, and we will continue to contribute to the city and all its beauty and the wonderful languages, the wonderful art, the, all of this history and background that we bring to the face of the city. I think definitely a good feeling. And we also have similarities in terms of both our families live really close by in West LA. Like my grandmother had a, was living a few blocks away from your family. And we're gonna go take the metro over there now to this whole stop where we would get off and, and see them. Let's hop on. Yeah, sounds good, all right. Now arriving, Expo Sepulveda Station. It's not a calculated way to say like, yeah, I'm gonna explore the Oaxacan community by depicting Sochi. It's like, no, she comes with that already. If we just show people that aren't necessarily part of the mainstream cliche LA culture map, then these stories come out. 
they're not easily packaged. That's what art is for, is to make things come to light that aren't easily manageable or packaged or sold. It's complicated. Hi, Eric. What's up? How are you? Good, how are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. So it's really great that you can take time out of your busy schedule to be in this feature. Thank about you. The Metro. Well, um, thanks for thinking of us. So this is off the stop off the Sepulveda station off the metro um, and I wanted to bring everybody here because Giant Robots has been sort of um, a fixture in my life since I was I don't know in high school maybe that's when the magazine started. Oh, the magazine started in 1994. 1994 since I was in high school and wow. my mom actually had a subscription oh my God. to Giant Robot. Your mom? <laughs> yeah because <laughs> she's really interested in Asian American culture and to see representation in such a an amazing format, such as something so accessible as a magazine. To, to begin Giant Robot was completely um, kind of random, right? We just kind of chose all the things we liked, put it in a magazine, uh, liked your art, put it in the magazine, and then same with the shops. We didn't really know, just kind of put all the things together and ultimately it created this kind of world of Asian pop culture and Asian American pop culture and kind of a different identity. Right, and it's yeah. and it's featured so many different artists and like, like created so many careers too and influenced so many different younger artists as well, and that's really great to and have us here. A, yeah, and we opened a gallery. Yeah, and you have just a gallery space street, now, yeah. and it shows some great work. And you're going to show us your gallery yeah, now too. Yeah, let's right? go. All right, yeah, let's go check okay, it out. Okay. Awesome. Giant Robot and the way that they've constructed their publication and what they do by depicting non sort of monolithic narrative about this is Asian culture, this is Asian American culture, this is one thing. And by including a lot of different voices and, and different cultures, they're just showing their own life, what they're all into, whether it be music or comics or art. And it wasn't a, trying to uphold some sort of identity politics slant or, or deconstruct who am I? It's just like, this is what we're into. The idea of the giant robot magazine too is that they didn't accept this idea or umbrella of whiteness as a as a center. And they weren't trying to exclude whiteness either, like they had a lot of indie bands or other comic artists that were white, but it's not like the center because that's not their reality. So that's why I appreciated them. Every piece of artwork, anything we do is political. Anything can be politicized. Within my work, I try to maybe frame things a little bit more personal in that the personal can be political. I mean, you don't have to be waving a protest sign to be a politicized being or to make politicized work. I think just doing portraits are a very honest way to do that because by just depicting a person you're kind of giving homage to them and also I think a lot of the people I choose to depict their whole entire existence is sort of the legacy of social struggle. I'm not trying to uphold this is what it means to be this culture that I'm a part of. It's more these are my friends, these are who I hang out with, these are who I like. I want to show the world what I really love. 